Welcome to the Tim Booker channel, where wisdom is worth spreading. We wish you a pleasant listening experience. Today, I'll be decoding how to read a book for you, delving into its essence, the benefits of reading, and reading techniques. Through these insights, you'll learn how to acquire knowledge and enhance yourself in this age of information overload. This book has consistently been a bestseller in the West, with its first edition in 1940, a new edition in 1972, and numerous reprints since. It's not just about methods and techniques of reading, it delves into the fundamental significance of reading. The authors of this book are Mortimer J. Adler and Charles Van Doren. Adler, a prominent figure in the American academic and publishing world, initially dropped out of school to work at a newspaper but later pursued self-education through night school, sparked by reading the autobiography of the 19th-century British thinker Mill. Charles Van Doren, on the other hand, was Adler's student and a remarkable figure himself, coming from an academic family and achieving fame on a popular American television quiz show before controversies arose. The version of How to Read a Book We Read Today is a significant revision of Adler's original work by Van Doren. So, why has this book remained a perennial bestseller for over 70 years? It's because its value extends beyond a practical guide on how to read. Whether you're new to reading or an avid reader, this book can either steer you away from common pitfalls or deepen your understanding of reading. The book discusses two main aspects, the benefits of reading and reading techniques. It challenges us with a thought-provoking scenario, if you were stranded on a deserted island with only room for 10 books, which ones would you choose? The answer highlights the importance of reading as a means to exercise our minds, preventing mental atrophy and extending our cognitive lifespan. In a world that promotes speed reading due to information overload, this book emphasizes that not all books should be read quickly. Pascal, a French scholar from over 300 years ago, noted that reading too fast or too slow leads to no gain. Therefore, the book distinguishes between two types of reading material, that which you can easily understand, like newspapers and magazines, and that which you must read, challenging yourself slightly above your current level of understanding. How to read a book primarily focuses on the latter. To become a proficient reader, you must be proactive and ask four key questions before diving into a book. What is this book about as a whole? What are the main ideas and details? Is the book reasonable and well-structured, or does it contain errors? How does this book relate to you personally? These questions correspond to different levels of reading comprehension, basic reading, inspectional reading, or skimming, analytical reading, and syntopical reading. The author dedicated a considerable amount of space to explain the concept of analytical reading. Analytical reading can be broken down into three main stages. The first stage is understanding the scope. What is this book about? You need to determine the theme and category of the book, whether it's literature, history, or economics. Then, provide a brief summary of the book's content, list the key chapters, and identify the author's main questions to be addressed in the book. Essentially, this stage involves understanding the book's structure before diving into it. The second stage is comprehending the content, how did the author write this book? You need to identify recurring keywords and mark important sentences in the book. From these markings, extract the author's central ideas and reconstruct the book's cause and effect relationships in your notes. Sometimes, creating a table can resolve this issue. Your self-made notes will allow you to quickly revisit the book's argument in your mind. The third stage is evaluation, how well is this book written? Every book you read should be subject to scrutiny, and you should have your own perspective. Only when you've evaluated a book can you consider your reading complete. The most effective readers are those who can critically assess a book. However, remember not to jump to conclusions before finishing the reading. If you disagree with the author's views after completing the book, be sure to summarize your reasons. If you still don't understand the author's perspective, list your reasons for that as well. The fourth and highest level of reading is called syntopical reading, or thematic reading. In simple terms, it involves seeking out books related to a specific theme or topic that interests you. This level of reading requires more initiative and judgment from the reader. Thematic reading isn't about reading one book after another, it's about reading different chapters from various books to address practical questions. It's reading with a purpose to solve real-world problems. Let me illustrate with two practical examples from the book's discussions. Typically, books prominently displayed in bookstores fall into two categories, fiction and history, which are favored by most leisure readers. For fiction, the author recommends fast and immersive reading. 
Ideally, you should read a story in one go, but this is nearly impossible for busy individuals. To approximate this ideal, you should aim to complete your reading of a compelling story within a reasonable time frame. Otherwise, you risk flipping ahead, forgetting what you've read before, and losing track of the narrative. Crucially, when reading fiction, you should engage your imagination, detach from the current reality, and immerse yourself in the world of the story's characters. Rather than hastily judging the narrative, strive to become a part of it. For instance, consider the monumental work War and Peace by the Russian author Tolstoy. This book presents a multitude of characters which can initially overwhelm readers. Names of Russian characters, often lengthy and complex, can be daunting. Many readers abandon the book early, believing they'll never grasp the relationships between the characters. However, this can be resolved. Think of it as a scenario where someone moves to a new city or community, starts a new job, and attends a social gathering. Initially, it's impossible to remember everyone's name or match faces with names. However, you will remember the face and name of someone you talked to for an hour or someone you plan to meet again. Similarly, in fiction reading, you don't need to remember every name, many characters merely serve as background or enhance the main characters. Regardless, after reading War and Peace or any substantial novel, you will recall the most important characters. Perhaps you read Tolstoy's work a long time ago, but if someone mentions the main character, Pierre Bazoukov, your memory of the novel will quickly return. Another significant category of reading is history books. History encompasses stories from the past to the present. However, our primary interest lies in the present and future, and the present largely shapes the future. Therefore, we read history books to learn about possible future directions based on the past. Two key points should guide your reading of history. First, focus on reading more than one history book about the topics or time periods that interest you. Second, when reading history, don't merely consider what happened at a particular time and place, delve into the reasons why people acted the way they did, especially in the present context. While history is more akin to novels than scientific texts, you should approach it with the same level of attention. When reading history, the first question to address is the specific, limited theme of each history book. For example, a book about the American Civil War may ignore the broader context of 19th century world history. To read history effectively, you must understand what each book is truly about. The second question involves the methods the history book employs. Does it divide the narrative by chronological order or use different logic for organization? Does it separately discuss the economic, cultural, and religious aspects of a given time period? Which chapter is the most important? By identifying these elements, you can find the core of the author's argument within the book structure. In conclusion, the highest level of reading is thematic reading, where you simultaneously read two or three books related to a specific theme. But what does it mean to have the same theme? For instance, both the American novel Gone with the Wind and the Russian novel War and Peace touch on the subject of a significant war. However, their similarities end there. Another example is French author Stendhal's novel The Charterhouse of Parma, which, like War and Peace, is set against the backdrop of the Napoleonic Wars. However, neither book primarily discusses the war itself. In both stories, the war serves as the environment and background, while the central theme explores the human struggle for survival. The war is merely a lure to captivate the author's readers. Therefore, if your reading theme is war, there's no need to read these novels, the essence of thematic reading can be broken down into two main stages. The first is the preparation phase. You need to create a reading list related to your theme, which you can reference from the library catalog, the bibliography at the end of books, and online searches using relevant keywords. Afterward, quickly skim through all the books on your list to determine which ones are related to your theme. The second stage is the actual thematic reading. You should follow five steps. First, browse through the selected books to identify the most relevant chapters. Second, create a set of keywords based on your theme. Third, establish a relatively objective viewpoint of your own and list the questions you want answers to. Fourth, differentiate between primary and secondary questions, listing the different answers for each question, and placing them beneath each question. Fifth, organize these questions, presenting your own questions and answers in sequential order to highlight your theme. After all this, you might be feeling anxious about the vast number of books in the world. Even if you exclude informational and entertainment books, there are still thousands of classics. 
what should you do? Don't worry, there is a pyramid of books, and genuinely great books are relatively rare. The author defines a good book as one that can grow with your mind. When you first read it, its depth surpasses your current level, and when you reread it, it continues to surpass you. Such books are few, likely no more than a hundred. For these exceptional books, all you need to do is read and reread them repeatedly. There's another comforting point to consider, human beings have diverse minds and tastes. The significance of the same thing can vary greatly from one person to another. For example, your appreciation of Newton may never match your appreciation for Shakespeare, perhaps because math and physics aren't your strong suit. If you enjoy mathematics, like Darwin, then the greatest author for you might be Newton rather than Shakespeare. Always remember, if your goal in reading is to become a better person, you cannot read just anything. Reading a bad book can be frustrating and disheartening. The author also states that reading a good book will provide you with two significant rewards. First, successfully reading a challenging, good book will significantly improve your reading skills. Second, in the long run, a good book can teach you about yourself and the world, imparting not only knowledge but also a deeper understanding of the meaning of life. In conclusion, the book, How to Read a Book, explores the art of reading, explaining the benefits of reading and providing techniques. Reading is the most effective way to prevent mental stagnation and delay mental aging. The fundamental principle of reading is to aim for materials slightly above your current level. The key criteria when opening a book are to understand what it's about, assess its details, evaluate its logic, and consider its relevance to you. Correspondingly, the stages of reading from low to high can be divided into four, elementary reading, inspectional reading, analytical reading, and thematic reading. Each stage requires different techniques and considerations. When you can master various reading methods for different types of books, you will reap significant rewards from your reading. That's all for today's content. Congratulations on finishing another book. Thank you for your support and attention. Please subscribe to the Tim Booker channel, like, and share it with your family and friends. Wisdom is worth spreading, opening the door to a brighter future. Thank you, and goodbye.